Hey y'all, Matt here from RetroOnly.com. Today I'm going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. I bought this controller brand new off of Amazon to test it out for you. That way you don't have to buy all the different controllers and not know which one's better and if the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller is worth the additional cost or that you should go with a cheaper alternative. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in today's video. Before I hop into testing out and opening up this brand new Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, please be sure to hit that like button and then also subscribe to our channel as it really does help us out a lot and it allows people all over the internet who have the exact same questions and problems as you with their Switch get their answers too. So let's go ahead and hop into unboxing the Switch Pro Controller and also giving you my personal opinion on whether it's worth buying or not. All right, so here is the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller and this is exactly how it comes. To open it up, you can go ahead and just slice right across here and then right across here to get that to open up. All right, so now that we have that opened up, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna pull out that little cardboard piece and then pull out the controller. It is wrapped in the cellophane, as you can see, and then it also comes with the USB-C charger as well. So that's all that comes inside of the Switch controller box. I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap it here. And that's what the Switch Pro controller should look like when you get a brand new official one from Nintendo. And as you can see right here, this is where you're gonna plug in your USB-C right here on the back. And then you have the different buttons that are on there on the front and then all of the regular buttons like you would have on your joy cons when they're put on the controller as well and then what you'll have is on the back of the box you'll have the instructions these are going to be the instructions on how you will connect it to your tv how you'll set it up with your switch all of those things which i'll go over now one thing to note about this nintendo switch pro controller is that you have to actually use this USB-C plug to connect it to your Switch. But then after that, it connects automatically. So what you need to do is you need to take your USB-C, plug the USB end into the Switch dock when you've got it docked as normal, and then you're gonna plug your USB-C into the bottom, or sorry, the top of this Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Once that's done, it automatically connects to your Nintendo Switch and then will automatically work from then on out. So as you can see here on my TV, I already have it connected. I'm moving it around even though it's not currently plugged into the USB-C. It is a wireless controller, but connecting it the first time can be a little bit confusing. On some of my other videos, some of the other controllers, you have to go down to change the grip order and do those sorts of things to be able to use the controller. But that's not true with the Nintendo Switch Pro controller. This one, you simply plug the USB-C from the Nintendo Switch Pro controller to the back of your Nintendo Switch dock. And then once it's plugged in, you'll feel a small vibration on your Nintendo Switch Pro controller and you're able to use it. Nintendo does recommend that you fully charge your Nintendo Switch Pro controller before you use it the first time, but it does come with the charge. So it can be used straight out of the box if you so choose. And you can obviously maneuver around using the Nintendo Switch Pro controller now. As with all the other Nintendo Switch controllers, it shows right across the bottom here which player you are. Now on the Joy-Cons, it'll be up and down, and then on some other controllers, it will be on the front as well. On the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, that's at the bottom. And then as I mentioned, it does take a USB-C charger, which means you can use the one that it comes with, or you can simply use the one that you normally use for your Switch dock. So you can just pull it right out of your Switch dock when this battery is dead, plug it right in, and you can charge it up for to play on your Nintendo Switch. Now, a couple of things to note about this before I give my opinion. First of all, the way that you'll hold this controller is a little bit different than some of the generics. Some of the generics ones will have bigger and shorter bottoms or bottom handholds here for the controller. This one is smaller, so it feels more like the Joy-Con controller that comes with the regular Switch. So if you prefer that, then you'll want to check this one out, although it is more expensive. And that's the next point. The downside to this option is how expensive it truly is. This one is currently right around the $60 mark, which is pretty high for a controller, especially considering that some generics will run for $15 to $20 on Amazon versus this one right around $60 on Amazon. So that's an important thing to consider, whether you feel like it's worth spending that extra money for this controller over all of the generic controllers or not. It's something you wanna think about. The last thing that I will mention about this controller is simply that it feels good. Now, that's something that you have to decide if it's worth the cost. If you're a avid gamer, it could definitely be worth the cost. However, 
In this channel, I specifically target families because that's what I am. I, myself and my wife, we have three children together and the Switch we mainly bought for us to just play a little bit on, but a lot for our kids to play on. So if you have children, I would not recommend buying this controller simply because it's $60. If my two-year-old takes this and chucks it in the toilet, I'm going to be out $60. My two-year-old takes this and chuck, takes the generic one that's $15 to $20 and chucks it in the toilet, I'm only going to be out that small amount. When it comes right down to it, I personally would not buy the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. It feels better in my hands than does some of the other options that are on the market, but the cost to me is just not worth it. You can get a generic one for $15 to $20. You can get some other middle of the range ones that will run between right around $30 to $40, saving you a considerable amount over this expensive Nintendo Switch Pro controller. But ultimately, you have to decide if it's worth it. If you have a family, I would recommend going with the cheaper generic. If it's just you, you're a single person, you don't have to worry about somebody breaking it or dropping it except for you, then it might be worthwhile for you to go with one that's more comfortable rather than the generic counterpart. Ultimately, that's something you have to decide. Now, speaking of generic counterparts and comparing them, you need to check out this video right up here. I just posted it and it's going to be covering five different Switch controllers and which one is the best for you based on some different criteria. I did drop tests on all five of these different controllers, including the Nintendo Switch Pro. I also did distance tests. How far away can you control your Switch from? If you have a big living room or a big, big game room where you're playing your Nintendo Switch, you'll want to know this information. So check out this video up here below, up here, and it will give all of the information about that as well and comparing the, this Nintendo Switch Pro controller with those other controllers as well. Again, my name is Matt from RetroOnly.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.